Hello and welcome back to part two of my talk, calibrating your nervous system in order to live a life of more ease, peace and joy. Um, in the first part, I gave you a lot of information about um, what trauma is, how a dysregulated nervous system may be showing up in your life, how it may be showing up in your business and why other modalities that you've been trying may be keeping you stuck in a loop if you have this un unaddressed and unresolved trauma in the system. Now, what I want to give you in part two are some practical tools that you can take away and start implementing into your daily life in order to start building that sense of safety again. So in order for all the things that we talked about in part one, the nervousness, the overthinking, the worrying, in order for these symptoms to diminish because they're not going to go away completely let's be honest they are a natural part of life anxiety for example is a natural part of life but they can't be managed to a point where life becomes easy where they don't take over where you have the internal resources to know that you're safe and that you're okay what we do is we need to restore the connection with the body that has been lost as a result of trauma we need to come back into the body and we need to create that sense of safety within the nervous system. So instead of being hypervigilant, instead of always being on the lookout for danger, on the lookout for what is going to go wrong, or we naturally start to look for cues of safety. We naturally start to expect the best, let's say. So in this way, the nervous system or us, you, learn to feel safe again. And that connection, not only with your with yourself is restored but the connection with your intuition the connection with the environment around you and the connection with others is restored now a lot of people when they're feeling overwhelmed are naturally drawn to let's say closing the eyes and taking a deep breath you know that's what we've always been told just like just close your eyes take a deep breath and ground now when a system is traumatized when a system is in a dysregulated state closing the eyes and coming into that body can be far too much. It's, I imagine you, you've spent your whole life trying to avoid feeling how you feel and then suddenly you're trying to force yourself to be in your body and be okay and be with these feelings. Your body doesn't have the capacity to calm itself down in that way. So instead of closing the eyes, instead of taking the deep breaths, which sometimes can be counterproductive because they actually activate those fight or flight responses, what I do in my line of work is I use somatic exercises. And it's very, the one that I'm going to give you today to take away is very similar to the exercise that we practiced at the beginning of part one. And it's an exercise known as orienting. And this exercise teaches the body that it's safe to be here right now in the room. So when we're feeling overwhelmed, for example, um, this is a really good technique to do this is a really good exercise to do in order to just calm the body and to show the nervous system that even though you're feeling like there's a wild animal about to attack you you're actually safe there is actually no hopefully no wild animal in the room with you the beauty of this exercise does come from practicing daily so practicing in times when you're not overwhelmed so using it as a daily practice building it up and then when you do become, um, come into a, uh, an overwhelmed state, for example, this exercise works faster. Because when I first started practicing this exercise, it wasn't doing much. What has helped me is making that effort to practice maybe once a day, even if it's just for five minutes, orient to my environment. And over time, that sort of compounds. So now when I do feel overwhelmed, begin to take over, I know, oh, can I feel my feet? Can I look around the room? Can I show my system that I'm safe? And it works much faster and much, much easier, let's say. Um, okay. So, I'm going to take a drink before we start. So, when you have been traumatized, you're often unable to feel your own physical boundaries because of the disconnection from your body. And this can have an impact in other areas of your life, such as setting boundaries in relationships, setting boundaries in business, 
because it's impossible to set limits if you have no sense of your own boundaries. Somatic exercises like the one that we're about to do encourage us to rebuild the connection both to self and to others along with a connection to the environment that is lost as a result of trauma. Now, that's often the missing piece. So if you, for example, struggle to sit down on a meditation cushion, a meditation can be extremely uncomfortable, especially if we're prone to the freeze response. Trying to force ourselves to come and sit quietly when we're in a traumatized, frozen response, and we don't want to be in the body, can be extremely uncomfortable. So if that is you, I encourage you to... For now, leave the meditation aside and instead, instead sit with your eyes open, look around the room, connect with your body and do this slowly. Um, and often when we're overwhelmed, we can feel like things are going on everywhere. Like our feelings, our emotions, our sensations are everywhere. We want to remind ourselves that the body is the container for of all of our sensations and all of our feelings. And it's also the boundary that separates us from our environment and from others. And this boundary gets ruptured in trauma. So we often feel as if we're perhaps raw, perhaps that we're unprotected. Um, and our skin is our first line of defense. And then our muscles, they gives us a sense of our ego boundary between ourselves and others. So the idea of this somatic um, exercise is to start to feel our own skin and learn where we end and where everything else begins okay and just before we start i want to make an just to remind you that that um if you feel uncomfortable at any point please stop this can be overwhelming for the system if you've spent so long outside the system. What we try to do is we try to, to titrate. We go very slowly, do a little bit and then stop. And maybe next time you can do a little bit more and then stop. So if at any time you are feeling uncomfortable, please stop and come back later. Um, and I also want to encourage you to follow your urges and follow your impulses i'm obviously going to say sat down um because i don't have much space and because i'm wearing leggings that don't match my t-shirt and i don't want you to see it <laughs> but if you do feel like you want to stand up stand up often like as children for example we are told in school that we have to wait until a certain time till we can eat we're told that we have to ask for permission to go to the toilet and all these things break our connection with our intuition. So we lose that connection with the body. And through this work, we're trying to build that connection up again. So if you need to stop this work and go to the toilet, then go. If you need to stand up and move your body, move your body. Okay, let's begin. So we're going to do an orienting exercise. So this is the first tool that I want to give you. And like I said earlier, feel free to practice this in times of overwhelm or... I would recommend set an, set an alarm, setting an alarm and practicing just for a couple of minutes every single day. So I'm going to invite you to begin by sitting or standing. Let's, let's say sitting in a chair, on a bed, on the floor, and just becoming aware of what is underneath you. What is supporting your weight? Can you feel your connection with what is underneath you. If you have feet, can you feel your feet touching the floor? Can you feel your bum on the chair? Can you feel your arms resting if you have arms resting? Can you just become aware of the heaviness? And can you notice if there's maybe a weight difference? Does one side feel heavier than the other? Does the left feel heavier than the right? Do they feel equal? Can you just be okay in your body, feeling what is underneath you, what is supporting you? And again, if this doesn't feel good, please stop. Just shift your attention somewhere else. Now, while you're feeling that weight underneath you, I want you to bring in 
So if we're in the body, I want you to now bring in the environment. I want you to start becoming aware of the room that you're in. So start slowly looking around, moving your neck, just looking around again, like I said earlier, as if this is the first time you've ever been in this room. What can you see? And if your eyes feel drawn to a certain object, stay there for a while. Really follow your impulse. Do what your body wants you to do. Build up that trust with your intuition again. Follow your impulses. Follow your urges. Look down. Look up. Look around, look behind you. And I'm wondering while you're looking around, can you still feel that connection that your body is making with the chair that you're sat on or with that your feet are making with the floor? Can you be in your body and in your environment? at the same time. And again, if you need to stop, please stop. Now, whilst we're becoming aware of our environment, we're gonna bring in our other senses. So what can you hear? What sounds can you hear in your environment? I have my dog here next to me in the bed. I can hear him cleaning, cleaning his tail. Can you hear traffic outside? Can you hear maybe the hum of your computer, your laptop? Can you hear your own breath? How is your breathing? Now that I've mentioned that, I'm not asking you to change it in any way. I'm just asking you to become aware of how are you breathing? Are you still maintaining contact with what's underneath you? Is your body starting to feel a little bit calmer? Now that you've looked around the environment and now that you've come into your body and you've seen that there's no threat, there's nothing bad happening initially, does your body start to feel a little bit better? Do you feel a little bit safer? You can also add in other aspects to this orienting practice. For example, you're spending some time touching your hands, touching your body, becoming aware of where your physical boundaries are. And you can tell yourself, this is me, this is me. And it might sound really silly, but when we've grown up in households where there's a lack of boundaries, we don't know where we end and others begin. So we can say to ourselves, this is me, this is not me. You know, we can, this is me, we can point at the window, this is not me. And I know this may sound really, really silly and like it's not going to do anything, but it is helping us to just build up that safety to pu put those boundaries back in place for us. Okay, so that's the first exercise. That's the first tool that I wanted to give you. It's the somatic um, experiencing tool. It's orienting, so it's becoming aware of our body of the environment around us and our physical boundaries. So as I said before, if you are struggling with meditation, try and give this a try. Or if you're struggling with maybe um, feeling like you have so many things to do at the same time, maybe try and just, instead of taking those deep breaths, just try and look around, and calm your nervous system in that way instead of taking those deep breaths. So the second tool that I wanted to give you 
is known as ventral anchors. Now, I didn't go into much or any detail actually about the, the different states of the polyvagal ladder. Um, but basically, we have a state known as ventral. And in this state, we feel safe. We feel safe and we feel social. We feel like we want to engage in the world. We feel like everything is going to be okay. It might not necessarily mean that we're jumping for joy and that we're happy. It just means that there's this internal feeling of ease and peace and like everything is just going fine. Um, so what we're going to do today is called ventral anchors. I'm going to guide you through that now. So ventral for me feels like you know, I'm, ha I, I'm, I'm open to making jokes. I feel a little bit playful. I'm a little bit excited about the day. Curious. Curious is how I would feel. Um, um, and when I'm around certain friends, they bring out this state in me too. So I want you to reflect on people in your life and make a list of the ones who bring you a feeling of being safe and welcome. You may also have pets who fill that place. It may not necessarily be people who are alive. Um, it may not necessarily be people that you've met. Maybe you don't have people in your life that feel safe, but maybe there's a character on a TV show, there's somebody on Instagram, there's somebody on YouTube that feels safe. So who in your life brings you a sense of safety? Who? Now, when I first started on this journey, I didn't have anybody to, anybody who felt safe enough in my life, but I did have the most incredible cat in the world. She's beautiful. And she was my first sense of safety. My dog's looking at me because he's getting jealous. You were also on the list, don't worry. <laughs> um, so yeah, it doesn't have to necessarily be people. It's just what living beings who in your life brings you that sense of safety? And write these down. And now I want you to think about what. So think about what you do that brings that ventral vagal state alive, that safe and social state alive. Could just be really small actions that feel nourishing and relaxing and that invite a sense of connection. For example, for me, it's going outside and feeling the sun on my face, going for a short walk, having a hug from a friend. It could be something simple, as simple as enjoying a really nice cup of tea or with the smell of incense. So what in your life brings you that feeling of, mm, you know, I, I just feel supported right now. You don't have to do all of this at once. This is something that you can take away with you and fill in as you start to, as you observe yourself. What things in your life bring you into that ventral state? Now, once we've done what, we're going to move on to where. So I want you to take a little mental tour of your world and find the physical places that bring you cues of safety. It could be in your home, your neighborhood, your community. It could be your work, your workplace, a friend's home, a place where you feel, feel a spiritual connection. Bring to mind 
the places that you move through or have moved through in your daily life. And just take a note of the environment and name those ones that bring you into, again, into this safe and social ventral state. For example, for me, I have a certain um, town that whenever I go to, I just feel so good. I have a certain tree that when I go for a walk, I always stop by this tree because this tree is a place that brings me safety. I just feel good when I'm around it. So where in your life? And again, if you don't have anything physical, you can imagine, maybe you can create that space in your mind of where would feel good for you. Perhaps you can envision yourself sat next to a waterfall. You can hear the sound of the water. You can see the trees around you. Maybe you're there with the person that you've written down about the who. And then the last thing we're going to do is think about when. Identify moments in time when you have felt that ventral vagal energy, when you felt anchored. Take a moment to go back and revisit that experience or those experiences. Bring them into your conscious awareness and write them down. Perhaps it was, it could be like this morning, for example, for me, I really enjoyed my breakfast. So when I was having my breakfast, I felt, mm, this tastes so good. So I can bring that feeling back alive in my body. So what we're doing with these who, what, where, and when is that we're becoming familiar of what things in our lives, what people, what places in our lives bring us into that safe and social state. And the practical side of this is recreating those feelings inside of your body. So can you recreate that in your mind and feel that safety in your body and start to practice this? Practice anchoring into that ventral state. So for example, my morning practice consists of me doing the previous exercise, the orienting, and then I take a few moments to just sit and imagine that I've taken my dog for a walk in that town that I really like, and I just feel in my body that safety. It doesn't have to be long, it can just be a minute or so. And regular practice of this builds capacity and teaches the body that like yes you do have the ability to feel safe and that you are safe okay and then the third exercise i want to give you is called glimmers so we've all heard of triggers we all know what a trigger is but the opposite of a trigger is a glimmer A glimmer is a micro moment of that ventral vagal energy. And they may be hard to come by, especially when we're stuck in these fight, flight, freeze responses. But they are there, like I've, like I've repeated throughout this, throughout this talk, we are wired to be looking for the negative, the bad, the danger. And we want to start looking instead for these glimmers to train the body to find those moments of safety. Now, these glimmers can be minuscule. They can be, like I said before, enjoying your breakfast, enjoying a cup of tea, feeling the sun on your face, a smile from a stranger. Or in terms of business, it could be trying to look at what is going right instead of what is going wrong and then anchoring in that feeling. It could be somebody wrote a really nice comment on my post today just feeling that and then making a note i really do encourage you to get yourself a journal and instead of a gratitude journal or as well as a gratitude journal keep a glimmer's journal keep a note of these these small moments of this safe social ventral energy now these three practices in themselves are transformational First of all, the somatic orienting exercise teaches the body that it's safe in the moment. 
the ventral anchors, the who, what, when and where, teach the body how it feels safe. And then the glimmers teach us to be naturally moving towards searching for the good. Well, I didn't really like using good and bad, but for the sake of arguing. Okay, instead of using good or bad, teaching us to look for the safe, safety instead of the danger. Okay, so those three exercises. If any of them aren't clear, please reach out. I do have an audio recording of this, the first exercise, the orient, orienting exercise that I would send to you. But if you have any questions or doubts about how or when or what to use them for, then reach out to me. So when you start to do these practices, when you, when you start getting that education of the nervous system and understanding what is going on and then applying that knowledge to your life through observing your own nervous system responses and then adding in these practices, bringing, this body, bringing your body back into this sense of safety, you're starting to build that foundation and we offer the nervous system predictability through showing up consistently. And by doing that, the body starts to relax. It starts to feel safe. And we find that we build the capacity to quickly move back into that safe and social state. So therefore dealing with triggers becomes much easier. We become more grounded, more peaceful, more relaxed. We learn to switch off at the end of the day. We become more connected with ourselves and our desires. We have goals and we know what we want. We're moving from a place of ease instead of a place of must or should or rush. We're able to put boundaries in place that support your well-being because you've restored that connection with your body, your intuition, and you've learned what feels good for you and what doesn't. It becomes easier to trust yourself and it becomes easier and safer to trust other people. And then you're able to let go and be more in that flow state because you know that you've got yourself and that the universe has also got you too. So if you're listening to this and you feel like your body is responding in a way that feels like, oh, this makes sense, this might be what I need, then please feel free to reach out. There are so many ways to work with me at the moment. I offer different programs and different courses at different price points on sliding scales to make this work as accessible to everyone because I truly believe that everyone will benefit from nervous system work. A few years ago, I was someone who I hated myself I had no idea what I was doing with my life. I didn't want to be here anymore. I was constantly talking about how confused I felt. And I never thought I would be sat here today sharing like this with, with strangers and, and showing up, not only for myself, but for humanity, because I want people to see the power that they have within themselves. I can't fix you. I can't heal you. I will never ever claim to be able to do that. The only thing I can, can claim is that I can show you the path. I can offer you the steps that I've learned and pass on that knowledge to you. Um, so yeah, reach out. We even run a monthly, me and my partner, we run a monthly nervous system challenge and that starts you off with the basics of this work. It's a seven day challenge and it's coming up to its third round and we've had amazing results from the past two. So if that's something you're interested in, that's there for you. And I know that there are, there are so many coaches that do use psychological techniques to make you buy, but I am a trauma informed coach and I do work. I do have my own set of ethics and I do try to sell from an ethical point of view. So I don't jump into people's DMs. If you do know, if you do want to know more, reach out with questions. There will be absolutely no obligation for you to buy 
there'll be no sales calls, no convincing you that you need this because only you know what is right for you, only you know what feels good for you, and only you know what is safe for you. And for me, it's really important that you feel safe from the very beginning. And this starts even before I take on my clients because that safety comes from the way that I run my own business and from the way that I embody this work into my own life. And that's it. It has been an absolute pleasure to share all of this with you. Like I said, reach out if you have any questions about part one, if you have any questions about the, the tools that I've just given you in part two, or if you have any questions in general related to the nervous system work, or if you just want to connect, if you feel that I might be someone that you think could feel safe for you, reach out and let's have a chat. Thank you so, so much. And I will speak to you very soon.